Hi, Craig Adams here. We are in Pescadero, California at Hippo Harvest. And we're gonna see how Hippo Harvest has been able to reduce water usage by 92%, drastically slash labor and material handling through advanced robotics. And especially how are they increasing yields and quality through very high tech lighting solution. We're also gonna see how do they increase yield and quality in one of the foggiest areas of California. This is one of the most exciting greenhouse transformations we've seen. They've started with a traditional greenhouse doing leafy greens and vegetables. So we're here with Alejandro, who's the operations supervisor here at Hippo Harvest. So what are we growing here? This is all lettuce, correct? Yeah, here we are growing purely lettuce. We have different varieties of lettuce that are grown either individually or in mixtures inside the module. And all of these modules combined can be uh, part of our mixtures, which is what, what we're selling. Basically, those are going where? To restaurants, supermarkets? Those are being sold in two presentations. We have big bulk bags that are usually going to restaurants, um, hotels, and, and big businesses. And we have another product, which is the small clamshell, and those go to retail. So I'm honored to be here with Eitan, who's the CEO and one of the founders of Hippo Harvest. You want to give me just a rough background? How did you get into this business? What were the steps? Yeah, so I guess Hippo Harvest at a super high level is about using modern robotic and machine learning techniques to try to make greenhouses that can be cost competitive with fields. My background is in robotics and automation. Yeah. I've been doing that for the better part of 15 years. But it's really uh, an effort that requires a multidisciplinary team. Right. And so now I'm joined by a lot of folks who have plant science expertise or operational expertise or you know yeah. mechanical expertise. Uh, so the general idea was to try to build green greenhouses that were compatible with modern machine learning and data science techniques. Right. And so we came up with this idea of what if you could run many different experiments in production and we reimagined greenhouses to support that. So each of these trays is in effect its own experiment and it's managed independently. And to make that possible, we took off the shelf robots from the warehouse and logistics space and turned them into tractors for our greenhouses. Nice. So they manage everything here. And you're using that software basically and then just do modifications for farming? Yeah, so for us, we buy the hardware, um, but then the software is all custom and bespoke. So these robots were designed for kind of warehouse spaces, right. uh, but we've retrofit them for the greenhouse space and built the software to make them work in this environment. So you're replacing manual labor with robots, and I noticed the robots have specific functions. We've seen the robots that take, carry trays between harvest, between the seeds, between the whole, what other functional areas do the robots take care of? Yeah, so the robots do a lot around here. They move modules around, like you've seen. They deliver water and fertilizer to the modules. Uh, they take daily imagery of the modules. They take sensor data of the whole farm, so we have a really good understanding of the microclimates we experience. This is one of their sensor robots. It's equipped with with cameras, with other environmental monitoring sensors. Sends all that information to the cloud exactly in each location in the greenhouse, pinpoints problems right away, estimates yields, can basically provide a massive amount of data on the whole operation. Uh, we put a vacuum on one of them, so it really is a Roomba, floor, it cleans yeah. the floor, and we just keep finding new uses for them. So Those, over and over we do All more that more. data goes to the cloud. So there's remote management capabilities for the farm, remote monitoring capabilities for the farm. Our systems will notify you when there might be a plant health issue that someone should look at. There's a lot of diagnostics built in, and it kind of makes farming a little bit easier. So a lot of the work that your team has done is in software, I imagine. 
Yeah, a lot of it is in software. I mean, there is still a lot of mechanical design that goes into right. the farms, right? So everything that you see that's sort of on top of the robot itself, we designed. The uh, the mobile platform itself. So what's is it doing here? Is it charging? Or? So right now this is charging. So it doesn't have any work to do right now. So it came home to. And it'll just hook up to a charger. That's right. And then as work is scheduled for it, we'll see it go out later. Let's talk about crops. What's the main thing you wanted to grow? Why did we start with lettuce? What are you thinking for the future? Yeah, so right now we're growing leafy greens, starting with lettuce, um, though we're starting spinach trials right now as well. Yeah. We've grown some kale, we've grown arugula. The reason we wanted to start with leafy greens is that uh, it's a crop that's one of sort of the big three in fresh produce. You've got tomatoes, you've got actually strawberries, and you've got lettuce and leafy greens. But it's also the shortest cycle crop. Right. And for us, we were designing something from scratch. It was something new that had never right. been done before. So we wanted to pick something where we could fail, you know, right. quickly and learn. We think a lot of the um, learnings and systems that we've developed for this are applicable across other crops, uh -huh. but we want to do one thing right first, and so we plan to get to scale on leafy greens before expanding. Into so crop, let's of. talk about economics. Are you competitive with outdoor? So our goal at scale is to be competitive with outdoor on a unit economic. At scale, we're getting pretty close. Um, it depends, of course, on so many different things, what your eventual CapEx profile looks like, what yields you're able to achieve at scale. But if you squint you know, at, at large scale, I think you can get there. How competitive is this system with traditional greenhouse practices with a lot of you know, unskilled labor, et cetera? Again, it depends a lot on the assumptions you make. If you think about production, it's actually an equation that includes uh, a few different components. So your dollars per pound, which is what you care about, is equal to the capex that you pay, how expensive your systems are, plus your opex, that might be your labor or even the cost of your electricity divided by your productivity, which is your yield. And we're really trying to optimize that entire equation for us. We see big capex savings relative to some of the uh, more fixed process automation systems right. you might see in greenhouses today. And then we have a lot of labor savings, especially relative to more manual like raft operations. I know you talk about, what, a 90% plus savings in water? Yeah, so on the sustainability side and sort of resource use side, we use 92% less water compared to the field. Right. Uh, we use about half the fertilizer. We reduce food waste. We have about 40% of the food waste of an outdoor production facility. It, how many square feet are we running now? So this is about half an acre of production today. Okay, and to run that half an acre, he was saying that's a, a team of about five people. Yeah, that's three on the production and two on the packaging and that's harvesting. That's right. The, the eventual goal, we think we can keep that team relatively fixed and continue to scale. So the eventual uh, goal is sort of one to two people per acre. Yeah. What is your pest management strategy in yeah. general? So here we use a lot of UVC treatment actually. So we have a robot. So you have a UVC robot? Yeah, wow. we have a UVC robot that goes throughout the that farm. That systematically goes everywhere. Yeah, that's right. So every, every day or every other day, all of the plants get. A dose of UVC. Wow. So there's a, kind of a greenhouse operating system, you right. might call it, which is constantly monitoring what each one of these trays needs. And when it notices, hey, it's time for water, for fertilizer, one of the robots that delivers it gets sent out and sort of delivers. That's amazing. So it's really the most efficient use water usage strategy you can imagine. Yeah, we're not even we're not a recirculating hydroponic nothing system, drains, so nothing drains. We just over water. That's right. We just give it exactly what it needs at the time it needs it, um, and so we can be very, very, very water efficient. That's incredible. A key part of this whole program is lighting. Obviously, to have consistent yield, consistent quality, we need consistent lighting. Number one, to have enough intensity all across the year. Number two, to compensate for the frequent fog they'll get here in Northern California in the mornings and afternoons. But tell me what you're thinking is, I noticed you said that you had a competitor's lighting system installed in the first greenhouse, but you were saying that the installation cost was almost as much as the fixtures? Yeah, I mean, with the lights, one thing that we realized was that having a modular solution in the same way that we've designed our entire farm to be modular could be really beneficial. 
in our uh, first installation of lighting, the install cost was a surprise to us, and it was, yeah. I think, almost the cost of the lights themselves. How much cheaper do you think this installation was? I mean, just roughly speaking. I think this installation was probably an order of magnitude cheaper than what we did before. We were able to use our own crews. We were able so, to... So maybe 10 or 20% of what that... Was I think called. it was probably 10 or 20%. Yeah, so which is massive because it's... Electricians are expensive, all that stuff is expensive. Yeah, and also just the flexibility to be able to do it with your own crews and to do it in kind of a gradual and modular fashion right. at the greenhouse. So using our Mega Drive system, as well as custom hanging, we are able to eliminate any electrical wiring above the canopy. We eliminated even Unistrut, where the lights are hung from the existing trusses. And it's all powered with our Mega Drive system. So we supplied all the cables, which run back to the Mega Drive on the wall. So this drastically cut installation costs in this case into the general mix of what you're trying to do. Obviously, what, what we try to do is minimize installation costs, simplify, so we can use basically un unskilled or relatively low-skilled greenhouse labor to hang the lights. There again, pulling the heat and the electronics out of the canopy. No electrical electricians need to work in the greenhouse at all. You can remotely locate the critical electronic components. They're allowed to run on a fan cooled basis so they the longevity of the driver is much much longer than a traditional system with the drivers in the sun above the lights also i know we worked with you guys to try to dial in the best spectrum for lettuce yep. which is not always obvious uh, so we finally ended up with a mix that seems to look pretty good we also have two channel spectrum control where uh, we did a, sp a custom spectrum just for hippo harvest just for lettuce to get the maximum productivity. It also has variable spectrum where most of the white is on one, white or blue is on one channel, the red's on the other channel. So you can actually automatically adjust the overall intensity or the mix between the white blue ratio, which is quite effective across the different phases of growth. So all in all, a much more effective system than uh, lights they've used in the past. So uh, as with every Mega Drive system, the drivers and power supplies are separate from the light fixture. So number one, you get that heat out, out of the canopy area. Number two, installation becomes much simpler because there's no wiring over the canopy at all. The only electrical wiring here is to connect power to the power supplies. These can be mounted as much as three, 400 feet away from the canopy, can be out in an aisle, can be in the room makes this very easy for installation, very easy to monitor and to maintain. Also, you control the spectrum through the power lines, so we don't have any problematic wireless controls or additional data cables. It's all controlled through the actual power supplies. We provide controllers for the system, or this can run to the greenhouse controller, so it can automatically adjust the level of the lights depending on the, the availability of natural sunlight. Let's say this facility is all up and running. Uh, where next? Um, then it's about really looking into opportunities to expand, potentially moving out of California, moving to the rest of the country, and trying to find partnerships and opportunities to get this to scale. And Amazon invested in us, so we have a partnership with them, and we're selling through their Amazon Fresh grocery stores. There are right. also a number of other retailers in the Bay Area we're working with. And that would be based on, I assume, on the market within a certain radius. You'd try to locate a greenhouse. Yeah, we can find areas where there's market demand for this kind of product or these kinds of systems. And then because we're so modular in how we build them, we can also be flexible in the scale at which we operate in a given sure. market. Well, it's beautiful and I really thank you for Yeah, thanks me so come much for all it. of your help and Oh you yeah, know, it's I, been I just think our lights fit so well into this format. So it's exciting to see it in operation. Yeah. You're all welcome right. anytime.